if you've ever deployed a Rails app and you haven't quite got all the things done, but you wanted to get like a testing environment up there, you have it on a server somewhere, the chances are you might visit a wrong path or something in that namespace of the app that you're using. And you see a screen like this, and this is like the default error templates in Ruby on Rails. And what I wanna go over in this video is how to make this more dynamic. How can I make this kind of part of my app as opposed to living in a, actually in the public directory of your Rails app by default. So one neat thing you can do under the hood, let me first show you, there is a public folder and a typical Rails app, which I, I just created a brand new Rails app. I'm actually using my, my kickoff Tailwind template for this, but um, I just referenced that just to, to scaffold a vanilla Rails app. So don't worry about any of the, I guess, tech under the hood. But Within that, there are these three error pages that are basic HTML pages with some inline styles uh, that kind of just give that look and feel to what you see here. So this is the 404 in particular, but we could go to 500 and see the same thing. So it's just kind of a, the built-in that isn't really meant to be used in maybe production, but it's there if you absolutely don't feel like doing it. So that's the benefits of a framework. Some of that work is just done for you. But what if you wanted to kind of customize that and make it your own um, dynamic error pages? So traditionally, that would just kind of resolve down to these files and you could actually just use those, customize them. But the, the catch is their styling and everything else needs to be embedded in the page. So you have no access to like Ruby on Rails, uh, JavaScript or CSS in this particular to kind of embed that in the page, but we could. And that's where this video kind of comes in. So what I want to first do is generate our own like controllers to kind of give us that dynamic place to kind of point these pages to when the time comes. So what I'll do first is generate um, two controllers or a controller that's going to have two methods on it. One's called um, not found and the other is called internal server error. So we can do this by saying rails generate controller and say it'll be called errors controller. Typically it's pluralized when you enter the real first name of the actual controller. And then we'll have a method on it called not found, or you can call these whatever you want, but it's kind of the easiest way. Uh, I wouldn't use the numbers because I think that's not actual Ruby you can use to define a method. So it's just a little tip there, internal server error for another one. And that's just two, you could add more if you wanted to, but up to you. So that essentially goes in and makes a new controller called errors controller, which looks like this to start with. And the key to this is rendering a certain status based on when these are hit. Um, so, so in your app, we need to still establish the routing for this, but what we want to render is actual render a status in return and just call it 400 or 404, excuse me. So we could do the same for 500 here and kind of get away with just basically defining these templates as our new error pages as opposed to the ones in our public directory. So what I'll try to do is go to our routes now. And here's some just kind of boilerplate that I add to my apps when I add it. But what I'll do is delete those Git routes that were added by default from that scaffold and add our own custom ones. And these are going to kind of be a little dynamic in the sense of what Rails looks for when it hits a certain URL. So we're going to match that 404. That's typically that public 404. And we're going to say to errors so this will say point that to this errors controller and then the not found method on it or action is typically called and then you could say via all so all requests that come through so we'll do the same thing for 500 but we're going to point to that different method and we'll say internal server error and save that down now let's put a space between device there so with that done, um, we can essentially go to our configuration now. This is the main thing to really remember. The main application file, we can pass a, another configuration to it to let us use our own error pages. So we could say config.exceptions app equals self, in this case, referring to our application. 
and then the routes. So point to the routes instead of where it tr traditionally does, which is in our public directory in our main app. So that might be a lot to take in at the very beginning, but it is one of those things uh, to kind of make sure you have that one, the route set up and your controllers and views. So then we'll go in and delete those public files just so we're sure we're gonna remove those. I'll leave the 402 or 422, excuse me. And save everything down. And let's go to our errors controller. We can leave the default for now. We might not worry about styling this, but you notice the file's not found now. So if I go to dynamic errors, maybe enter something like here, it's not gonna do anything because we're not booted up our server yet. I do have it booted, excuse me. I just don't have it running on this browser. So if you go to localhost, we'll have just a basic, uh, my kickoff tailwind template theme. Uh, I think it's compiling right now, so give it one second. There we go, so that's that. And if I believe if we could go to just any route, it's gonna do this, but if we go to our development environment, in this case, we can kind of mimic what it does in production. So I'll go to environments, development, and you could say on, on this bit here, you could just say false instead of true. I would refer, obviously turn that back off when you're done, but um, in this case, you could go to your error pages. We'll probably need to reboot our server real quick. Since you edited an environment file, and let's try this again. There we go. There's the errors. Notice our main shell of the app is still there though. So that's kind of neat. So in theory, now we can use actual like Rails magic into this app. So if you wanted to use anything from the asset pipeline or anything like that, Tailwind in this case, so we could just say class um, for text center, I'm just gonna do that. Um, that's 404, let's go to the 404 and, and do that one. Just to show you by example. So there we go, I've got this giant text, class text center. I'm not gonna go through and style this whole page because that wouldn't be very, I mean, compelling content, I don't think, but that kind of gives you the concept in mind. So if you ever run into that, um, it's something I've just kind of discovered recently that was kind of annoying to deal with because the public files that you have in your public directory, you have no access to any other assets or anything in your main Rails app. And going this route gives you that opportunity to kind of enhance that and use Tailwind in particular was my main driver there. So if you want to um, do that with other error pages, you totally could. You probably just need to match it accordingly in the routes. So. Hope that was useful. It's a quick tip that I think is a good one to understand and learn from. You can render these statuses, basically any status that comes back like a, a 200 or whatever, which if you never, I don't know why you do a 200, but it wouldn't be an error in that case. But in this case, that's kind of just what I'm trying to describe. So again, hope this was useful. If you have other things that are bugging you or you want to understand about Rails, um, I'm kind of doing more of these quick tips or nice to nice to know things with Rails because I'm discovering stuff as I go on my own journey. So uh, with that, I will leave you for now. All right, peace.